everybody and welcome back to Atman Unlimited. Tool diameter offsets. This can be a little tricky if you don't have a tool measuring probe. I'm going to show you an easy way to measure your tool diameters accurately and repeatedly. So what we're going to do is we're going to first put a test indicator in the machine and we'll find the Y portion of the spindle axis. So we'll zero the spindle axis in Y so that it's parallel with our test indicator. Then we will put in a, a ground end mill that we've miked the diameter on so we have a known diameter and we'll bring that up in X and then we'll zero off of it. Then we can put our unknown tool in and then bring up to the test indicator and then when our test indicator reads zero we, knew, we know where the zero point in an X was and we know where our X is now that's the radius of the tool. So using this simple technique we can measure the diameters of our tools. So let's go do, do a couple of them and see how it works. Okay, so you can see our setup here. I just have a test indicator sitting in the vise. It, it's just hand tight, don't, don't reef down on it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jog the tool to the test indicator. And then the first thing we wanna do is we wanna zero our Y. So I'm just coming in, we'll touch off, it was roughly zero, and now I'm just going to jog Y, not that much, we're looking for the peak. Okay. So there's the peak. Now we can also see our tool run out here, so let's check our tool run out. Okay. Let me go down a little bit more. There we go. So this currently has about a foul run out in it. It's not too bad for a large end mill. If this was a small mill, it'd be more concerning. Okay. So there's the center. And let's call that zero. Okay, so now that's, that's going to be our official zero. And if we jog Y again, we should only see it go down. We should never see it go up. Okay? So we are very well centered. Okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zero Y on the machine. Okay, so now Y is zero. Now I'm also going to zero X on the machine. So now X is zeroed. So this is now a zero. It's not the zero, it's just a zero. So the next step I'm going to do is I'm not going to move Y at all anymore. I'm only going to move X and Z. So I'll, first I'm going to just back off my indicator. So we backed off the indicator. Now I'm going to raise Z up. Okay, and now I'm going to come back to X0 first. So 
So there's x0. Now here's, here's the trick. That OD of that tool holder, I know the diameter on. It's, it's just a round bar. It's easily to mic it up. It measures out at 1.6822. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jog my X to 0 0.8441, which is half of the 1.6882. Okay, so now my spindle axis is centered over what we called zero. I'm going to zero x again. Okay, so now I have what, what we have is that we have x is zeroed to the axis of the spindle. And now y is also zeroed to the axis of the spindle. Now we can measure our tool diameter. So we're going to jog x again. And then we're going to bring it back down so that the inserts are lined up with the indicator. And now we're going to jog x back in. And then what we can do is we can just slowly rotate the tool around until it starts touching the indicator right there. And then you want to get all the way to the very tip of the cutting surface. Okay, see how it fell off there? You've got to be careful of your indicator that you don't accidentally nick it. Okay, so now when I come up, it should come to zero right at the edge of the tool and then fall off real quick. So I'm just a little hair over. So I got to back up a smidge. So now let's measure the next cutting surface. So that one's running quite big. So we'll back off a little more. So you can see the run out is in the spindle, or it's in the way that the tool holder is in the spindle, or it could be the taper. So there's zero, zero. So that one is uh, short. So that's over about five tenths. That one's good. That one's good. That one's under by about five tenths. So we should be right in the middle. Okay. So now we can look up at our tool display and our, uh, or our X display, and our X says 0.9972. So that is the radius of this tool. And this is supposed to be a two inch facing mill, and it's measuring out at 1.9944. So it's all, just a little bit undersized. But you can see by using this method, you can very accurately and fairly easily measure the diameters of your tools. Now once you have this all set up and zeroed in, now you can just switch tools, bring Z up, switch a tool, bring it back down, 
bring X in, and now you can measure the diameters of a whole bunch of tools at once. Very easy, very accurate way to measure your tool diameter. You can see that this method of measuring tool diameters is pretty simple, it's easy, and it's cheap. As long as you use a good test indicator that's repeatable, it doesn't have to be accurate, it just has to be repeatable, and you've got your machine dialed in pretty good, and then think about backlash, only come up to the indicator in one direction in X. If you go past it, back up and then come at it again. If you follow those simple tips, you can get pretty accurate measurements on your tool diameter. Remember, you're doing the exact same thing that a tool touch probe will do in the machine, except you don't have to spend $1,000 on a touch probe or more. So I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, measure some tool diameters. We'll see you in the next one.